morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Monday to Bruno and Bruno only. That's right. The rumors are true. Bruno has made it to the toast, you guys. He's so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have him. I'm so proud of him this far in the way that he's behaving and carrying himself and really showing how good of a boy he really is. 100%. He's very influenced by Do. I think that Brew has been watching the show in his downtime mm. and he sees what Do does around here. He looks here, up to him. And he's really just a Do stand in. Brew <laughs> is looking so sexy, so cute, popular to boot, bitchin'. Great, Great hair. hair. The boys all love to stare. Um, so thank you for bringing him. I know it's a journey, especially in the rain. When you texted, I'm bringing Brew. I'm like, there's no way. Because Theo, even if Bruno wasn't coming, I was not bringing Theo today because the rain is just so annoying. Oh, interesting. Well, my thought process was it's been about, I think, nine days since Bruno's Since you lied. lied. Yeah. Right. So it's nine days of lies. So, like, obviously everybody's waiting for me to stop lying. We need to get a chalkboard. It's been one day <laughs> since Jackie lied. Zero days. Yeah. Today we're crossing it out. It's been zero days since you lied. Um, <laughs> you did lie to us yesterday. Yeah, what did, we what? all hung out yesterday and you were like, I'm bringing Bruno. And then you showed up sans Bruno. I know because I was too concerned because okay. of the rain. And like, I was just too concerned. It wasn't worth him being everywhere. But today I was like, oh, it is raining. And also I wasn't like crazy about bringing him on Monday because we have so much like work to do. And Catching he's, up. He's so distracting. So I don't need him like running over to McPlant. He's, by the way, he's so distracting. Like I'm not even looking at you, by the way. Right. That's like Friday stuff. So yeah. anyways, I was like, I'll bring him tomorrow. But he actually... um is getting groomed tomorrow morning. He's busy as spa services, mm -hmm. so he can't join us tomorrow. And I was like, I can't go like 11 days of Bruno's mom lying. No, you can't be 11 days of a liar. No, so Brew came today, and I'm so glad that he did. I mean, he was really nervous to come here. He was nervous and excited because he was crying and sh uh, wagging his tail. Yeah. So that's like he's happy and sad at the same time. And I think now that he's here, I mean, he knows mommy never brings him anywhere torturous. And I think he feels comfortable here. This I, is a nice space. It's a safe space. No, definitely. But I think he was like, where are we going? What are we doing? He didn't see this for himself today. Yeah, well, the agoraphobia will do that to you. Yeah, plus, like, it's raining. Like, it just... it. Threw him off his schedule. Speaking of, Henri was a major topic of discussion this weekend. I want to make sure everyone's okay. Here in the city, we're fine. I did see some videos of like Brooklyn being like a little flooded, but for the most part, we were okay. Yeah. I don't know about everyone else, so just I watch out. I haven't seen anything like too destructive, but I also haven't seen that much because yeah. I, I haven't lo watched the local news. I've just kind of been sidetracked with the Henri of it all. Like such a weird name. No, I love the name for the Hurricane Henri. Yeah, it's like Henry grew up on Long Island and then went traveled abroad for a semester and now he's Henri. Yeah. It's kind I, of like a sickening name. It is kind of a sickening name and it actually inspired us to do a little research yesterday on the, where hurricane names come from. And I always thought that the country of origin got to name the cane, based in alphabetical order, as we all know. But no, apparently, the World Meteorological Service Organization has a, like a li six lists of names that they cycle through. So that like this year, we're going through a list that was also used in 2015. So if some of the names sound familiar, it's because they are, which just doesn't seem Seems like... so unnecessary. It just doesn't seem like the best way to go about it. And I don't know, I feel like it's never too late to change, you know, what yeah. you've been doing. I feel like... But you were also telling me that certain names, what, if they're really destructive so hurricanes, for, get required, uh, get retired. Yes, very destructive hurricanes, the names get retired because, like, you know, everyone associates it as one hurricane. If you're like, Hurricane Blank is coming and everyone's like... So obviously Katrina's been retired. What about Sandy? I was thinking Sandy might be retired. Yeah. Sandy was weird because, like, in certain parts of the city, it was like completely fine and then five blocks down like it was underwater it was so crazy yeah but it was really destructive for new jersey yes jersey and shore so i have to now look into which ones have been retired but i don't know i think we could use like a little bit more creativity when it comes to the hurricane names and i would like to nominate the people who name the opi nail polish geniuses to name hurricanes geniuses just something to think about i like that idea very much i, I support that isn't legislative it, like bill. they just have lists six lists that they keep cycling through that makes no sense no and like each hurricane is an individual like they deserve their own name it is there's no reason that we should have two hurricane you know beatrices whatever yeah that exactly. does sound like a name they would Though give it. earlier this year i guess it didn't get a lot of um i guess it wasn't extremely strong there was hurricane claudette you're kidding earlier this year it was That's on what the they list. call me when I leave the bar. Yeah, she is the hurricane. Oh my god, interesting. My namesake. I should have paid more attention. Yeah, I, but it wasn't such a big deal. They will she recycle it. She obviously didn't make a splash. No, she never does. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to tell you that, like, I finally picked up my Kindle this weekend. I saw that you did. I feel so warm and fuzzy inside, like knowing that you had a Kindle filled weekend. It was great. I actually had like 
balance this weekend, which is so crazy. Mm -hmm. I relaxed a lot. I saw a lot of family. I spent so much time with Michaela. My heart, my, my cup is truly full, like truly. Um, but I also went out. I hit the clubs. I read. Like it was perfect balance. I'm so happy for you. Would you like to share in some of the content that you consumed? I read "Regretting You" by Colleen Hoover, and I love Coho. Like most of her books, I would say like Verity. Um, it was. It ends with us. November nine. Most of her books that I've read, "Ugly Love," I loved. Verity. All, do you like Verity? I said that. Yeah, loved. Five stars. She didn't say it. I literally said Verity. It was the first one I said. Like rewind. Rewind. I don't know if she did. I said I'm, it. I'm like listening intently. No, I said it. Okay. Whatever. So I've read a lot of books. One, what was the one? Hopeless. Hated. Trash. So it appears Trash to me. Trash if you're above 18. Yeah. So it appears to me that Coho has like two different genres of books. And one is like for adults and one is for teenagers. And I think the one that I read, Regretting You, was for teenagers, even though it was like kind of steamy. It was so cringy like and bad and I got invested in it rather quick because there's a big twist in the beginning and then like there's no other twists so mm -hmm. it was just like suffering the consequences of the twist yeah and I finished it just because like I had to but oh my god it got so much worse at the end and you just like hate all the characters they're all being so dumb um so I did not like that I didn't and okay. I feel annoyed that like that you came back to reading and that's what you read no I just feel annoyed that like the like, coho like she almost like disappointed me a little bit, you know? But, you know, there's a pot for every kettle, and this was just not my book. Yeah. A cover for every pot. Yeah. So then what happened? I started People We Meet on Vacation. I'm only like 10% in. Um, I was, had to watch Potomac last night. It's cute. Okay. I told you not to read it because I personally didn't like it, but you know what? I would love to hear your thoughts. The thing is, is like I'm now on my third book recommendation from TikTok. The first was We Were Liars or something. Yeah. Hated. Literally, the first couple chapters are introducing the, the people in the book, and there must be 50 of them. How is anyone supposed to remember that many people? Then I, my second one was Regretting You, which I hated. Right. And now my third is People We Meet on Vacation. And if I hate it, I'm done taking recommendations from Book Talk. I think that's good, because we have such a great community. I mean, obviously the redheads, but like within the toasters, you, there's just such a great community of readers I that... Know. You should be able to get recommendations from the group. Can I just tell you that, like, you making me, or not making, recommending when we were on vacation last year to read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, it's, like, the best thing you ever did for me. Let me tell you why. Okay. Because, like, first of all, it's a book I think about all the time. Like, I actually might even read it again. Like, that's how good it wow. is. Wow. But also because, like, a bunch of my friends, like, who are, like, into reading, like, not, most normal people don't read as much as you. Right. So they'll read, like, the best book of the year. Like, right. most people probably read Where the Crawdads Sing. Yeah. So most people don't like actively keep up like with the, with the new cool books. So whenever people are like talking about books, finally I can first of all join the conversations. Yeah. And two, I'm like, have you read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo? And they're like, no, what's that? And I'm just like, I love giving people like a life changing book that I know is like 10 out of 10. I'm sure there are people out there who didn't like it, but for, like for the most part, everyone loved it. And like I get to be that person, you know, like yeah. the intellectual superior person. Yeah. Be like, oh, try this. I think you'll like it. Did you read Malibu Rising? You know, I started it, and it's not that I didn't like it. I just wasn't even pulled into you it at captured. all. That like, I'll pick back up, but it's not on my to-do list. Got it. Well, I had a huge weekend of content as well that I just like to run through. Yes. I watched the show Hacks, like I said <gasps> that I would. Finally! And I enjoyed most of the show because it was really great, and the, um, the older comedian... Was the best. Was the best, and she's everything of the sort, but we had to suffer through the younger comedians. I know. Parts. And that was our cross to bear, because she was insufferable. The worst. The worst. So I enjoyed the show very much, but I would say however much percentage the younger girl was in it was Took bad. away from... Took away from the glory of the show. Okay, I just want to... I was just Googling it to make sure. So I was wondering, first of all, like why this girl got the job on like this HBO show. Um, and of course, like her mom is super famous, you know? Okay. Her mom is like formerly on SNL, Lorraine Newman. Okay. She's uh, whatever. She's famous. So I'm like, she wasn't that great of an actress. I'm like, why did she get this job in a show that was like obviously really well thought out? Yes. So okay. That so that, that me. makes me feel better that like it wasn't because she, you know, because she's talented. Yeah. <laughs> no. She just, but also, I mean, the actress herself, she's fine, but like the character she was playing was so irksome, like atrocious. She, and she's just like, listen to Deborah Vance, like yeah. shut up, like shut you up don't and listen hear to Deborah Vance. You're like not fully thought opinions like Deborah has the answers shut up okay but honestly for me like one of the highlights of the show was the agent's assistant 
<laughs> she was everything. I feel like this is going to be like a breakout role for her. I follow her on TikTok. I'm not sure like how she got started, but I know she has like a big digital persona. She's so funny on TikTok. She is just a s hysterical. I loved her. I think her name is Meg Stalter. She is really funny in the show. But like obviously her character is like it's annoying. annoying. Yeah. But she, I agree. She was a very good character. Um. So I enjoyed Hacks. I did. Thank you. I'm glad that I watched it. I'm really clearing off this content plate. Are you thinking that the show is inspired by Joan Rivers? Not the show, but the character of Deborah. Yeah. Like the plot for the show is just clearly like a good idea, like old and young coming mm -hmm. together. But like the grandeur of the way that Deborah lives her life, you know, sort QVC. of the, the story of where she was sort of like blacklisted from late night yes. is very Joan having like this tragic past with her husband is very Joan. Yeah. So I think Deborah was modeled off, and also like being the OG queen of comedy, like right. is very Joan. But so, Joan didn't do Vegas. Like Joan no, yeah. didn't work with a young writer at the right, end of her right, life. Right. This isn't like the story of Joan, right. but like they definitely were influenced by Joan. Do you think there's gonna be a second season? Slash, does there like need to be? Yeah, it's open to a second season because she sent that email. Right. Um, I wish they didn't have that because it would have been like a perfect mini series. Yeah. But we'll see. I would watch another season. But like that actress who played. Joan was hysterical. Like yeah. I just was, the writing was very good. Yeah. She I loved was it. Great. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Then I decided to read cause I didn't want to just like, just be watching TV all weekend. So I read the personal librarian, which has been like very popular. I've seen it like at every airport that I've been at. It's a historical fiction book. It's about JP Morgan's personal librarian. So that was just like a fun tie in, but really and it's about the woman who is in charge of the Morgan ladders, right? Well, she, the library doesn't have Morgan ladders, at least not when she was curating it, but throughout the book, she's writing ladders to the Therefore, Morgans. they are the, the Morgan, Morgan ladders. ladders. It was so Morgan-y. The, really? book, the book was so Morgan-y. Like I really have a, a pretty good sense of that period in the Morgan family history. And now you feel like going to the Morgan Library, right? I do feel like going to the Morgan Library. I wonder, because the book is really popular, I wonder if they're getting like a surge of interest. 100%. Because um, it's just right here in New York. And that's like a pretty cool thing about living in New York. Like a lot of the times in the books that we read, like the thing that they're talking about is just down the street. It's on 36th and Madison. Right, like you could just go and see it. So that's pretty cool. One point for New York today. Very small Even point. Even though it happened 100 years ago. <laughs> Um, so, no, but I've passed that building before, and I'm like, that's stunning. Like, someone should get married there. Yeah. And I'm like, what is the Morgan Library? But it's a thing. It's a thing, and the book was amazing, and the story of um, the personal librarian, Belle DeCosta Green, is an amazing story, and so I really enjoyed the book, and I read it in, like, two days, and it was historical fiction, but, like, a true story. I still don't know what to call books about real people, though the the story is like fictionalized because they're they don't know the conversations they're like extrapolating from mm. other you know what i mean i don't know what yeah that's i don't about. know what to call that either anyway so i finished that and then i started a new book last night called rules of civility by amar tolls dana had read it and she gave it a high rating so i was like okay and i'm enjoying it so that's good did you make time to watch the friday episode of the morning toast with me josh and shannon i i did catch some of it but it, it hurt too much Okay. You know, and you did tell me like the pertinent bits of information, but it just, I'm so happy that they were here and that they had such an amazing time and you had such an amazing conversation with them. I'm just so sad that I couldn't be there. I have to say, I do think that's like top five, one of my favorite guests. One, because like, of course, when we interview people, I'm super interested in them, but like, I've never been so invested in anything in my life. Like I was Love Island. Right. right. And like to see, to like have, if I could have chosen any two people, it would have been them. Right. They're so cute in person, by the way. They gave so much tea on the show. And then also like after the show, they gave me even more tea, which like, unfortunately I cannot share, but let me just tell you, it's wild. Um, and I literally like would not let them leave without taking like spritz merch. Shannon left here with like a new hoodie. She was wearing a new phone case. I gave them morning toast condoms. I gave them morning toast face masks. Um, the girl who one of uh, Josh's really good friends who was the girl running his social like this entire time. Like you have to chew. They were saying like, yes, Shannon paid her sister to do it. Josh's friend like offered to do it. Um, his friend is a huge toaster. So then I was like, take this for Alex. Like I was like clearing out our whole thing. Yeah, it looks nice. No, it's clean. empty. It's I gave empty. them everything. Um, it was really just like the best. And I really was trying so hard not to talk over them because I feel like when we do guest interviews, you usually temper the conversation like because I'm an animal. But you weren't here to do that. So like 
You I just got to be an animal. No, I think I actually did a good job of like tempering myself and like holding I, back. I heard, read rave reviews about your performance. I read them too, and it really <laughs> made my day. They were really rave. So um, I'm just so excited, so glad that we can put a button on Love Island. You know, I feel like so many of our learning questions were answered. And then today is, you know, another episode of Bachelor in Paradise, and I'm just not feeling motivated. But I'm not feeling motivated to do anything. But I just don't think it's going to it's gonna work for me. Yeah. I feel you about not being motivated to do anything. I just like woke up this morning and it's like still doom and gloom. And I'm just like. And I think we both looking at our outfits. Like we both have I'm the done. same thought. I'm done with summer. I'm t- officially. I'm just, it's like, fall. This slow ride out of August. Like speed it up. Needs to end. It's fall. I'm finished. I just want to say growing. I think I've said this a million times. But growing up is realizing that summer ain't shit. Like. You know, as a kid, it's like summer break. There's obviously so much to look forward to. Camp, no school, two months, no homework. And then you just kind of keep that energy up your whole life. But there comes a point when you realize, like, summer sucks. Because, yes, the weather's nice. But we're still doing the same shit we have to do in the winter. Like, low-key, winter's the shit. Yeah. Like, you get home in the winter after a long day of work. You have no desire to go outside. You're cuddled up, cultivating a vibe, appreciating nature from inside but after a long day of work you get home you're fucking sweaty from walking out in the heat Mm. and then you get home and you're like oh it's so nice that i should do something but you're fucking exhausted so then you're sitting inside wishing you were outside honestly summer sucks yeah you heard it here i agree totally looking forward to falling into fall and i just want to let everyone know that that's where i'm at i'm not falling into fall i'm steamrolling into fall like i'm fucking done i have put on leggings today and i was like i haven't worn leggings in forever and that's a disgrace because leggings are my best friend yeah no i had the same exact thought but i got these ones with stirrups so I was that's like, like a crazy thing stirrups i thought they're pretty cool when we were like kids like stirrups were everything they're people, so cool people would cut their own stirrups like yeah, into their leggings that was a little nuts. that was trashy <laughs> <laughs> No, but stirrups, I just think they are super fall, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you're falling into fall. I'm falling into fall. Yeah. Fuck off. Falling into fall, comma. Fuck off. <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, so I guess without further ado to do to do, we can get into everything. I just want to give like one more shout out to my best boy who I love so much. I can't believe he's here with me. Like the times that we share together are so special and mm-hmm. private and intimate. And to be here like in the public and he's just like doing his thing and, and mommy's so proud. Mommy's so proud, <gasps> Mr. Brew. Do you want to come here? Oh, my love sweet. Come. Why don't you <gasps> go to your auntie? Oh, he swerved on me. Come here. Do you love your auntie? I mean, it's a hard no. He, he's exploring. Let him. He's got to see what's what's going on here. Make sure it's up to code. Come here. He's the building inspector. Come here, my gorgeous. Why don't you go to your auntie? Oh my, he's literally so distractingly sexy. It's like hard. Uh, didn't I tell you it's a whole and he walks damn around with this new brew with this joie de vivre. It's it's a lot to take in. I'm not gonna lie. I've I've been trying to tell you, but I'm glad that you're experiencing it for yourself. Oh, also, we're gonna have Real Housewives of Potomac recap, recap. this week. Uh, today okay. i can't speak sorry um and it was a pretty good episode it wasn't as explosive as i wanted it to be yeah. but it was good yeah it was but it's good. the episode we've been waiting for yes okay without further ado to brew here are the past five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast that's true Jax. that's true but i would be remiss i would be devastated and i would even be heartbroken if i didn't let you know that today's episode is brought to you by better help Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist where you can start communicating in under 48 hours. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It is not self-help. It is professional therapy, and it's all done securely online. The service is available for clients worldwide, and you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. In return, you will get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as you do with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. You can visit their website and read all their testimonials that are posted daily. It's betterhelp.com slash reviews. And if you want to get 10% off your first month, go to betterhelp.com slash toast. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash toast to get 10% off and join the million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Betterhelp.com slash toast. Thank you for that, Claudia. A pleasure. First story, Zooming big news. business with you. 
Big news of the weekend. Caitlyn Jenner revealed another grandchild is on the way, but who's pregnant? Yeah. So while visiting the toy store in Quincy, California on Thursday, the gubernatorial hopeful opened up about her 18 grandkids. Oh my God, I forgot that she's grow- going for governor still. That's why she was doing, like, at this toy An store event. speaking because it was a... a um, a stop campaign. on the trail. A campaign trail. I'm just confused about Caitlyn's schedule. Like, I know she's supposed to be or already is on Australia Big Brother. That must have ended because she's in Quincy, California. But also, Australia's in lockdown. Maybe, like, the show was canceled. I don't know. I don't know either. All we know is that she was at the toy store. And spilling the beans. Spilling the beans unintentionally she opened up about her 18 grandkids and joked that she wanted 30 for the evenness of the number before con- before confirming she'll soon have 19 grandchildren as one is in the oven so of course everyone saw this and freaked out because there's been so like much co- speculation about kylie confirmed this rumor that's been swirling that kylie's pregnant then they came out and said that bert one of caitlin's sons is pregnant with his wife and I think that's probably true. For sure. but Because I, I don't think Caitlyn would spill the beans in this way about Kylie. I mean, I hope to God Caitlyn is not that stupid. I don't think that I don't think that she would. But it is shining a spotlight on what was already like, um, you know, something people were whispering about. And now every single news outlet has come forward and said that Kylie is pregnant. Yeah. According to sources. So I don't know if that means that like Kylie's camp technically just confirmed it for everyone. So they would leave her alone. I don't think so. To be honest, like I hate this so much. And, like, I don't know, I didn't even, like, post about it or anything. I just feel like people should be given the space to announce their own pregnancy. Like, that's really all I feel. And I just don't like... Yeah, and I, I don't know, it just like, feels icky. And I also feel like Kylie is going to announce that she's pregnant, like, whenever she's ready and whenever it's time. And I'm sure she has something... Like, and we didn't get that from her first pregnancy. And so I'm sure she's going to be, like, publicly pregnant this time. And just, like, let her do it in her own way. I'm, I'm sure she has some cool things planned. Honestly, I don't know if we're going to see her publicly pregnant. I feel like, from what I gather, especially at, like... um. Anytime they've done like a reunion or anything or anytime Kylie talks about it, she says like keeping it low key was like literally the best thing for her body. And she loved it. She loved that time in her life so much. Like I could see her doing that for the next pregnancy, too. I think it's different because I think she was so young that like she didn't want to even have to deal with like a whisper of people's thoughts about what she was doing. I think now that she's older, she's already a mom. Like I think that I don't think she's going to be like, you know, doing uh clear blue sponsorships mm-hmm. but i think like she'll we'll see her that would be crazy i think she'll probably stay home because she likes being home yeah and that's where she'll want to be if but i had her house i would like staying home too i think we'll see her i i don't think it's gonna be you know nine months of old content and then in and then a video of vlog the day after i don't know Stormy i wouldn't be surprised is born. i wouldn't be surprised if she keeps it like low-key again she like speaks about that time with so much like I reverence know, because i think it was it was about that particular moment moment and that pregnancy and her age but she is like nobody's questioning her now so no that's true she, it doesn't have to be that way well it's worth saying congratulations to bert <laughs> that, like, justice for bert like everyone's like oh it's just bert like no bert's having a huge milestone congratulations bert Congratulations, Bert. The news here is that Bert is expecting. Congrats, Bert. It's really beautiful. It's so happy for Bert. Right. And Constantly being like steamrolled over like yet again, you know? Yes. Though I do believe, if you were to ask me, I do believe Kylie is pregnant. I just um, feel like it's not our I ju- business. I look forward to finding out from, from, hear- herself. To, from hearing it from her. You know, I feel like when Kylie dropped that vlog of Stormy, like everyone remembers where they were. It was one of those moments to you because I know exactly where it was. I was in the back of an Uber. No, I don't remember. Oh, I guess it's not one of those moments. Yeah. I remember like what time of year it was and everything. Oh, it was what like time early of year February because that's when Stormaloo's birthday is. Got it. Stormaloo. So what do you think this hypothetical other child will be named? Do you think we'll stick with a, a weather theme? Yeah, I think it'll be Henri. Cloudy? Henri. Henri is like stunning. Except like when I think of a ch- young child with a French name, of course, I think of Johan and Francois. De- yeah. uh, what was their last name? McCord. McCord. No, Van Campen. Okay, that's that's Francois Van Campen. That flows a little better. Yeah, those. Wonder what those kids are up to now. I, I honestly, I'm the sure ama- they're like TikTok famous. The amount that I think about them is they live in not healthy, run free. They actually live in Australia, but also in my mind. Yeah, I hope they're doing well. I'm sure you know they're thriving. They must be like have some sort of trauma. I think every kid who grows up on the show, like, I'm sure if you ask like 
Avery Singer or like Ali Shapiro, they have like trauma stories just because it was like such a weird time and it wasn't like a thing now. Everyone has a reality show now. But back in the day, it was like really kind of like a spotlight. I'm sure they all have trauma, but I don't I just feel like Francois and Johan's is worse. I don't know. I feel like Francois and Johan like have a thick skin. You think? I do. And I, and I feel like they're not really like affected by like pop culture. The they're kind of like... They do their own thing. Yeah, they lived in Brooklyn. They're obviously very alternative. No, and I just feel like they've never even heard of Real Housewives of New York still. Like, they're just like... You think they have no idea they were on the show? <laughs> Honestly, probably. Yeah, they were so young and they were only on for like three years. Yeah, and they're just like doing their own thing. That would be hilarious if they never knew. Except they show up at school and there's obviously one loudmouth bitch who watched Real Housewives. He's like, hi, I'm Francois Van Campen. And she's like, from the Real Housewives of New York? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I just feel like they would just not... They would just be like... Okay. They wouldn't they wouldn't know. I'm telling you. No, I think you're taking it too far. No, I'm telling you, they don't know. They don't know about And it. I am telling you. It just you. doesn't compute for them, you know? Okay. That's what I think. Okay, you ready for our next story? Sure. Taylor Swift has joined TikTok. Lip syncs to a rap song with lyrics about her, quote, let the games begin. Okay. I love Miss Girl more than anything. Like would truly take a bullet for her but like what was this video i do think that like the transitions were meant to she was showing her different eras like so at first she was in her folklore then evermore then we got her like dressed in fearless and then we got a little sneak peek of what she's going to be looking like for red and she has the bangs and the red lipstick and she honestly looks like she's 22 again like it's it's great but this song like i don't know who sings the song what is the significance it's a rap song and she's singing like the 10 seconds where there's a song lyric about being taylor getting business done swiftly like who sings the song? Uh, British rapper Dave. And the song's called Screwface Capital. It just felt like a very weird place to start. Yeah. And I just feel like Taylor Nation, like which is her management team, they have their own social medias. They have like a million followers everywhere. They've been on TikTok this, thus far. And everything they put out is like so curated, so like perfect. It's really like a great content machine, Taylor Nation. And I just feel like they were obviously like managing this emerging, you know, artist on TikTok. And I just feel like they dropped the ball. <laughs> well, I feel like this is actually pretty like, well, like thought out and done for TikTok where it's a little more on the fly. Like you said, like I remember when we were doing TikToks and you were like, nobody cares what you look like. Mm -hmm. like and it's just more so like spur of the moment. That reminds me, I have a TikTok we need to film after this and I'm going to need your help. So just don't let me forget. Okay. I think Brew got into McPlant. Um, so this already feels like way more curated than like the TikToks that we see, but it's still not as curated as the shit she usually posts, which is like made by a video editor and like, which I love by the way, yeah. like I'm ready for, you know, Taylor raw. Yeah. But I'm, it's not even the rawness I'm questioning. It's the concept. Like, what is this song? What is this? What is the point? Why are we all here? Yeah. So it didn't hit for you. No, but, like, of course I watched it 10,000 times and I already followed her. And I'm just curious to see, because, like, it's such a big deal and she just did it right before we started the show. When I was looking at her TikTok, she had about 140,000 followers. And right now she has 245. Wow, that's, like, 100K in, like, a minute. Nice. So, yeah, that's new with Taylor. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool. Are you ready for our next story? Is it the final story? <laughs> Not even close. It's the number three. Wow, we're moving slow today. I know. We have a lot to say. Well, you know what? We will be singing that. Oh, give Brew love. If you show Brew love, he'll give you everything in return. Hi, gorgeous. Brew love. Brew love. I can honestly brew fit brew love. like into anything. That's any song. all I do when I brew listen to music. Brew love. Because oh, honestly, brew rhymes with you. It rhymes with do. No, literally, my the one we sing the most is I can't imagine my, my life without brew. I can't imagine one night without brew. Honestly, I'm like disappointed in myself. I've not listened to Reverie. Me neither. What, like for one iota of a second. Me neither, because I just don't trust Ben Platt not to fuck with me. No, I know. And like also, I've just not been in a headspace. I haven't been on a plane in a window seat. Yeah, right. You know? oh. My friend Abe texted me and he was like, I'm like, on this plane right now? He was going to LA. He's like, I'm so emotional. I'm like, happens to the best of us. Happens to I'm the like, best of us. I'm like, just lean in. But you know what I will say? Like, I do feel like, you know, being emotional on a plane is just, you know, part of being a human being. But I've never seen someone else on a plane, like crying in the window. Let me tell you why. Because 
traveling is so miserable. Like, if you just saw someone looking miserable, you'd be like, oh, me too. No, like, but like with a tear. Yeah, because what are you, how close are you to their face? Like, if there's, you're never <laughs> crying like sobs. It's, it's like maybe you'll cry. Tears, though. Maybe like one or two. I've yeah. never cried really more than one. Oh, oh, then you haven't experienced. No, I have. Then you haven't experienced. But also, people like hide their faces when they cry. Like, they don't want to be seen. <laughs> Just look out for it. I check, will. Check on your fellow travelers. For sure. Come here, Brutadu. We got to get into the next story because it's some big news. What is it? Um, Mike Richards is out as the Jeopardy host <gasps> amid a cascade of scandals. Okay, so we reported last week that Mike Richards, who was formerly the executive producer of Jeopardy, was now going to be the host. And we were like really kind of jazzed about it. And I guess... Honestly, um, I don't think we've ever given like a news story that much praise. Right. And then... In reading more this weekend, I'm pretty sure we were the only ones who were jazzed about it because not only does has he like made um, offensive comments in the past and also like his workplace behavior was oh. extremely sus. Oh. But people were not happy with the fact that this person who was running the contest for who's going to be the next Jeopardy host the whole time like was in the running himself, hmm. you know, and they feel like maybe he could have. I mean, I didn't read this specifically, mm. but just reading between the lines, I feel like he might have, like, sabotaged, yeah. no, like, sabotaged other of the guest hosts, like, to make himself look better. You know, I have and that they never really had a chance. You know, I have to say, like, I was going to come on here and say something totally different. First of all, I didn't know about his workplace conduct. I just know that he went on a podcast and said something like... He had a podcast. Oh, and he, like, said something anti-Semitic and misogynistic. And, like, as a Jewish woman, I just, like, I just hate to, like, read things people said eight years ago. Like, I just don't feel like it's reflective of them. And I hate, like, that we live in a culture where it's, like, if you said something eight years ago, boom, that's your label yeah. today. Like, I just don't like it. But hearing all this other information, especially about no, the sabotage... when I first heard that he was out because of, like, old comments, I was like, okay, this again. But then I read there was a whole long article I think it was in the ringer about like just him in general and him as a boss and all mm. this stuff and then also the idea that he didn't tell anyone like he was in the running yeah and I guess like there was also in reading in between the lines that he was like when we report on this article it's like you never thought the guy behind the camera would no, be it's in a front six, it's an American apparently dream. he's thirsty as fuck oh you're lying <laughs> they didn't use those words specifically but it's like he's he wanted to host Price is Right like he tried out for that Drew Carey got it like mm. he well he must be devastated to come so far and literally you didn't even come close you got the job yeah and then you fucked it up yeah Oh, interesting. Okay, because, you know, I was literally, like, thinking when, when I heard this story that I wasn't going to talk about it with Josh and Shannon. I was going to, like, wait for you. And I was going to have, like, a totally different reaction. But you're kind of persuading me, like... No, when I read the headlines, that was, like, I was, like, you know... Old roll, tweets. Old tweets, like, when, you know, this is just so, so crazy. And then I read, like, more about just him as a person and his conduct as a boss. And there was a lot... Yeah. There was a lot. Honestly, I'm like so surprised that they even chose him. First of all, ABC is like so buttoned up and Jeopardy is like this most prestigious show. You would think whenever they made an official decision, the person would be thoroughly vetted. Yeah. And probably there were people like like people on social media talking about this before while he was still being considered before it was officially announced. So you'd think that they would have known about it. But also if they're vetting him, like some of this, these things are just about him, his personality. Right. There's no like tra like paper trail. No, no, not even that. But like the people who are vetting him, like must work with him. Like if people in the office don't like him, like that should go towards his. Yeah. So who's it going to be? I don't know. Back to square one. Literally. Mine Bialik. I still is agree. still I still would prefer if it's not someone like who's famous famous already like someone who's just straight Jeopardy forever vibes. So there's also the Ken Jennings of it all, but Ken Jennings has old tweets. Like I'm sorry, we are all humans. Like everyone has old tweets. Like, but when people thought it was going to be him, like those tweets had resurfaced, and I guess they had surfaced many times before because he's like kind of famous before this whole thing and he's addressed them and he says he keeps them up like as a reminder to like show what an asshole he used to be which sounds like something people lie, say lie when they get caught like taylor nolan said that too remember yeah, yeah. she was like yeah i knew about these atrocious tweets like i i love them like she was like they remind me every day how much how far i've come like no like girls go through your social media if there's one thing that's even remotely offensive delete it like people who say they keep up their old tweets to remind them of how far they've come are the biggest liars ever just trust and believe, okay? <laughs> you know that's true. hundred percent, but you know it's a, It's the go-to excuse for someone who's like, no, I've known about these. <laughs> no, it's not like the go-to, but like it is like a crafty way 
of get, of how dumb do they think we are <laughs> for real i can let you know i had old tweets and i did delete them and somebody had screenshotted them before i deleted them and i didn't know that they were there i deleted them okay yeah so i just hate that but that's what ken jennings okay. said so even i don't even think they could choose him now i just want to say like based on what i read I think there's a chance if it was just the comments made on the podcast from 2013. They would have been okay. Not okay. Like, it still would have been a news. But it was, like, more than that. It just seemed to be, like, issues with him as a person. person. So Ken Jennings technically... I, I'm sure Ken Jennings is lovely. I, I have to... I refuse to believe anything other than that. But I also, like, I don't know this man. So, like, now... Like, at first I was like, yes. And now I read this article. I'm like, no. And I'm like, you know, just a follower. Like, yeah, uh, like, totally. You know what I mean? So I don't, like... Who am I? I have to meet Mike Richards and then I'll decide what he's like. Yeah, I just, it's so hard. I know. You know, so I guess. But he's staying on as the executive producer of the show, which probably is so painful for him. Oh my God. Seeing yeah. someone else literally right in front of you living your dreams. It's better than like losing your whole job in your career. That's true. You know, could have gotten that way too. Been there, done that. Yeah. So now I'm like confused with where I stand. Yeah, and like where do they go from here? When does Jeopardy come back? They've got to, like, hustle. I don't know. Like, Alex Trebek died a while ago. Like, we've got to find someone. Yeah. Maybe it's Ken Jennings. Maybe it's Mayim Bialik. Like, maybe she won't just do the college thing. Even though she is, like, famous in other ways, she's really, like, after Big Bang Theory. I feel like she doesn't really act a lot. She does, like, a lot of philanthropy, and she's, like, very involved in well, academia. She did that movie that you watched. Jackie, that was like 10 years ago. It was like the, an old Lifetime movie. And honestly, I was never able to look at her the same. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, I'm just saying, like, she is very involved in academia. She, like, studied, like, neuroscience or some shit. Yeah. So she wouldn't be a terrible choice, I'm just saying. I just don't want a celebrity. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, I kind of agree. That's all I'm asking. <clears throat> okay. But you know what? Like, we need a host. So We need a host. Speaking of hosts... It's actually a great segue into today's sponsor. <laughs> Jeff Lewis has issues. You may know Jeff Lewis from the hit Bravo series Flipping Out or his serious XM radio show, Jeff Lewis Live. And now Jeff is bringing you a brand new podcast we think you'll love called Jeff Lewis Has Issues. Whether it's drama with family and friends to parenting or relationships, there's no denying Jeff Lewis has issues. Jeff is joined each week by friends, experts, and celebs from Tamara Judge and Jackie Schimmel to Judge Lauren Lake and Patty Stanger and others as they take notes as they take a no-holds-barred deep dive into every detail of Jeff's life. Come for the laughs and leave feeling so much better about your own life. Check out Jeff Lewis Has Issues. You can subscribe now on Stitcher, Pandora, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. Again, that's Jeff Lewis Has Issues. Check it out. Thank you for that, Claudia. It's a pleasure. Our next story, some big news in the media world. OnlyFans is sharing its new policy banning sexually explicit content. This is so bizarre. This is so bizarre. So on Thursday, the video and image sharing site OnlyFans announced plans to ban sexually explicit content starting on October 1st. And that seemed extremely counterproductive to what they've become really successful in doing and what a lot of creators have become successful doing there on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. They're now clarifying what it means, but it means a lot of what you think it means. It, right. They do not upload, post, or display, or publish content on OnlyFans that shows, promotes, advertises, or refers to sexually explicit content, which means um, intercourse, oral, genital, 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 anal, genital, oh, wow, oral, you're genital. Getting really specific. Actual, or, so yeah, it's, extre it's all the lists of things that you can't do. So pretty much, you're, you can post nudity, mm -hmm. but you can't post, post pornography. Like a acts, video. Yeah. Acts. Yeah. So here's Sexual the thing. acts. I feel like for a while, OnlyFans has been trying to like, not rebrand, but just like let people know, like we're a platform like Patreon. They've reached out to us many times, like to move our... They did? Yes. They have housewives on there. Housewives aren't doing porn. They've been trying to establish themselves as... Right, this, like, like Rebecca third... Minkoff did her... Um... Didn't she do her? Yes, that sounds familiar. She dropped her like collection. Fashion on, Week. Fashion Week collection Sonia on OnlyFans. Sonia Morgan's on it. A lot of people have OnlyFans who are famous. I don't think they make a lot of money, but it's like a branding thing. They've been trying for a while to, I think, compete with Patreon and just become this platform where people can monetize their audiences. So it wasn't that big of a shock that they took this standpoint because it's obviously how they feel, but like it's a really dumb thing to do. Like, yes. why cut off your nose to spite your face? Of course you want to have, they, they don't, obviously don't like the stigma that they have. Okay, I don't think it's that, I'm sure like, yes, they wanted to become more than just um, known for like sex stuff, but they had said it was something to do with payment processors, like that they couldn't like 
use some processors and like banks because of the content that was shared on the site so it was like in order to work with those processors but like I don't know if I believe that I don't know it's just it just feels shitty like so they got so popular popular successful like off of the backs of people who were doing this and now where are those people sp- like right that's the thing so I know I, I read a story every day former nurse like people quit their jobs and are making a ton of money and if there's an audience for something and there's someone willing to do it who cares let them do it yeah so they I think another platform is gonna pop up and because this is a great opportunity I wish I started OnlyFans yeah there were people there were people making a, a, Tana Mojo posted a couple weeks ago she made six million dollars in a month yeah she launched another channel then too what do you mean? She like because her first channel did so well. She's launching another channel. That's is like, she? Yeah, smart. Mm-hmm. Well, what are people like her gonna do? I know Trisha Paytas is making like millions a month. YouTubers. But, I mean, still a lot of the people who are on like for the people who post just like nude photos of themselves, like they're okay. That's still gonna be kosher. But I just feel like OnlyFans will lose a lot of its like fans in a sense, like people who just like stroll looking for stuff. Like if they know they're not getting what they really want. I just think like they're users number of users is going to go down yeah and I, I just i also think it's just like a shitty thing to do like to you at know. the height of your popularity so many people rely on you for income yeah. and like you're just going to change your whole business yeah. and don't lie i don't it's not because of that they've been tr- definitely trying to compete with the patreon people don't post nudity on patreon but patreon is a great way for people with audiences to monetize that to offer a subscription service right, to monetize content like- I mean, I have no idea what the numbers are, but I feel like OnlyFans is more successful than Patreon. 100%. But Patreon's really popular. Like, No, I know. But like people talk about OnlyFans all the time. Like most, a lot of people don't like just talk about Patreon in their day Right. And that's why OnlyFans is stupid. Yeah. Extremely. People are talking about them. Also, like if it really is about the payment processors, like build your own payment processor. Totally. And like if you, if, and if you are wanting to like be taken more seriously, like why don't you start two different companies, like OnlyFans and OnlyFriends or whatever. So like one is for like a Patreon type of content and then one is for nudity. Yeah. It's just, like, I don't understand this. I think this is such a dumb business idea. Yeah. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, either it'll destroy OnlyFans or it'll do exactly what it intended. And, like, maybe one day we will end up on OnlyFans instead of Patreon. Like, it'll become such a big platform. Right. But right now, I love Patreon. I will defend Patreon to the death. Love. And I should be, should, like, one of their brand ambassadors. You should check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Toast, where we have premium content. We just came upon the one-year anniversary of the great chili cook-off. Which is just Such making a good me feel like now that we've hit one year, I'm just like itching for a rematch. Mm-hmm. For a rematch. Ooh, I, I have a, a new, chili, I, such a chilly day. I have a new recipe and I, I'm ready to bring it. And today. I'm ready to show you guys what I've been working on. Do you agree that today is a chilly day? It is. I need to get meat. Me too. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Speaking of Patreon, I just wanted to say, so one of my favorite things is that whenever someone gets fired from a reality show, they always immediately are like, it's fine. I got an offer to do my own show. Um... What's her name? Elizabeth Vargas has me and Brian. Are out. Oh, Brew scared the shit out of me. Did he eat that whole rest of the bone? I guess you'll find out when he takes a dump. No, but like he couldn't be barking if he was choking. No, it's in right? his mouth. Oh, it's okay. in his mouth. Oh my God. Like a little cigar. Come on here, pup. Okay. So Elizabeth Vargas, one of me and Brian's favorite things to do is send back her stories to each other. Cause she's always saying like, man, with the producers today, she's continuing this charade that she's getting her own show. When like, first of all, nobody gets her own show, especially not a one season wonder. But, I wasn't I wasn't worried. So then also <laughs> Kelly Dodd is like, you know, I'm getting my own show, blah, blah. But then yesterday, her and Rick announced that they're starting a podcast on Patreon. And they like made this turnt video in their backyard. And it was, I'm sorry, it was so funny. Like I was laughing my ass off. Um, so Kelly Dodd joined Patreon. That was just all I wanted to say. We welcome all creators. But head mm-hmm. over to patreon.com slash morning The morning toast. toast. The morning toast. Are you ready for our fifth and final Oh, I cleared out our triangles. Hold on. I think it's worth getting because Brew's never heard the song in live and in person. Thank you. <laughs> Brew Dadu, it's okay. It's okay, my sweet. Okay, I'm back. Ready? Brew, you want to know why it's okay? Because it's the final story. Do you think these triangles are making Brew feel at peace or like he wants to kill us? He looks peaceful. He's just making some friends outside the door. Okay, you guys, fifth and final story. I feel like this one goes out to me. It's a little Suez Suez news. The massive container ship that shut down the Suez Canal trade tries to sail through again. 
Here's hoping they've gotten their ship together. That's funny. The Ever Given, the massive vessel that got stuck in the Suez Canal, will try to sail through it again Friday after sparking a nearly week-long international shipping disaster satellite data show. The Japanese-owned container ship that caused billions of dollars in trade delays in March left a port in Egypt and began voyaging through the Red Sea towards the canal with two tugboats early Friday, according to the ship tracking site marinetraffic.com. The behemoth was shown inching toward the narrow waterway alongside dozens of other ships with no apparent trouble on Friday afternoon. But all hands better be on deck this time, shipping experts said. This is crazy, you guys. Crazy. Honestly, of course I'm praying for a safe voyage, but like, I don't know, I kind of want to go over there and sabotage them just so we can all start talking about the Suez again. Yeah. I'll send Luann down to distract. Yeah, so obviously it's nice to be back in the Suez. I'm happy ever given, you know, it is like a massive ship. They're not just going to retire it because it had a little bad PR. Yeah, no, it's like, (laughs) you're not going to retire the ship because the ship is embarrassed. Yeah, like, the ship, get back to work. Like, totally. We all screw up. Like, we all have bad days. Ship happens. We all... (laughs) Shit happens. We all cause billions of dollars in losses for happens people. Happens all the time. Happens every day. So I'm glad to see, you know, you get knocked down, you get back up. I get knocked down, but I get up again. That's what they should be blaring through the speakers. You never gonna get you down. down, and I get knocked down, but I get up again. I get knocked down. <laughs> Damn. Flat. Sorry, sorry. Flat. So flat. <laughs> what am I paying for That's those triangle classes for? You. Literally. I don't think I've ever actually related to a character in a movie more than I do the brother from Step Brothers. A hundred percent. That's me. Like, if my family's not driving a Range Rover doing, like, organized harmonies, I don't want it. No, send it back. Send it back. So um, good luck to everyone aboard the Ever Given. Um, nice to see you guys back out there. and Nice to be a part of something again. Totally. Good luck, but also not that much luck, you know? If things happen. Don't worry. You know. We're here for you. <laughs> we'll support you. Um, let's dive into our TV recap segment, which is The Real Hostess of Potomac last night. Finally, Ashley arrived at the house and like brought the information that we needed in order for things to move forward. And I don't know. I was just feeling really conflicted. I wasn't as... I was waiting for like Giselle to get her ass handed to her, and she did. But for some reason, it didn't feel as good as I wanted it to. I think it's because Ashley's like weirdly on Giselle's side. I know. And it's like, Ashley... What are you doing? And now the lines are getting crossed because, like, I'm agreeing with Candace because, and you know what? Like, honestly, I never thought I'd say this. Like, every episode, like, I hate her a little bit less. Like, I, I think her friendship with Wendy, just because I'm like so riding with Wendy this season, is actually like working in her favor. Yeah. So I, don't, I just didn't feel really good. But my God, did Wendy have some things to say? Like, she went beyond. You know, of course, you turned out to be exactly whatever. But when she said, "The life you're living now." Is God giving you like what you deserve? Whew. That was just like a wild thing to say. Here's where I sort of landed. Landed because I was ready for the takedown. When they were having lunch and, you know, Wendy was saying like, you hurt my feelings, blah, blah, blah. And I was with Wendy. I was right there with her. And they were her. like laughing at her. No. But then what Giselle said to Wendy, she was right when she was like this isn't CNN CNN like the way that you speak to us like you think we're like on some heated show like we're just talking and it's really true like Wendy is a hard person to root for because she does do those things where it's like I have time today TikTok, TikTok. like yeah you like, know you're right you're right where and it, she really treats it like it's you know a, debate, a sound bite a, a sound bite a debate and not just like a conversation With and friends. so like the zingers like they just sort of like they fall flat for sure they, they fall flat so it's hard and also i felt like sometimes she she's like obviously has a lot to be upset about but like in certain instances i felt like she was overreacting like knowing that i really like ashley and i think that like one she's doing her job like she's here she's at work for 12 hours and she's gonna earn her paycheck Bring her information but she also did come to wendy like in the kindest way possible and made it all about her like self being like if anybody can relate, it's me. Like, she wasn't being holier than thou at all. Like, Giselle can't say shit because Giselle refuses to talk about her own problems. Yeah. So Giselle really can't say anything. But, like, Ashley deals with this all the time. So, like, her coming to Wendy, like, I It want- was already out there when, when Ashley came to her. Right. And I, I, I understand that Wendy was just already on the defense, especially with Ashley, because Ashley was sort of taking Giselle's side. But, like, I really don't think Ashley came in. I, I think Wendy was right to be mad at Giselle for bringing it up to Ashley. But, like, I wish... Wendy didn't just like explode on Ashley too because I felt like she wasn't really coming from a bad place I agree um but like 
the fact that there's rumors about all of the women all the time on every franchise and like you're going to bring up this one this season. Well, like, and it's just the person who brought it up. First of all, Karen Hugert said it best. We all heard the rumor and only one person chose to bring it up. That's right. Giselle. That's because she's mean-spirited and she is successful on the show for stepping on the necks of other people. So that's what, and just the fact that it was Giselle is just extra annoying because it's like, Miss Girl, like you literally have the most rumors about you. You like die when anyone brings them up and you have the most to like you hold things so close to the best when you have like the most shady shit going on and you're really digging into other people's lives like worry about yourself and it's true she does all this to deflect from the fact that like are her and Jamal together did he have a baby with someone like what's going on right but I feel like I mean she probably thinks she's deflecting from it but the more she gets involved in other people's lives the more it's like but what about you if she just kind of sat back in this instance like say Candace or someone else like I wouldn't be thinking about what's going of on in course. her personal life. Also, when Wendy was just sort of like railing into her and Giselle like did the thing where she also did it on the reunion where she really doesn't know what to say. She sits and like laughs. And she just sits and it's like, she really has no defense. I love it. I love it too. I, if I were Wendy, like I would be so upset. I don't think she was like overreacting in any way. I didn't think anything that she said was so crazy, honestly. No, but she misdirected some of her anger at Ashley. Yeah. And then like Ashley and Candace are fighting because Candace is just like defending Wendy. And that was annoying because like we need them all to band together. I know. But also my God was Robin being annoying, like getting involved. Like literally no one's talking to you, Robin. Shut up. Yeah. And I'm sorry. How dumb does Robin think we are? Macy's is not wanting to sell your hats. Okay. Right. Embellished. Right. The lie is embellished. She's embellishing. She's uh, embellishing the yeah. truth. Um, so I don't know why. I just wasn't feeling like the satisfaction from that episode that I was waiting for. And it's because it, things didn't go as I planned. Ashley was like also the, the target of Wendy's anger. And I just felt like that was misdirected. Yeah, it didn't go exactly as planned. But still, it's like a step towards justice um, for Team Monique. And you know, Karen just sits idly by like the queen that she is. Mia was also being a little annoying, like getting involved. It's like, you're new here. Just don't try and mediate. Just sit back and watch. Yeah, especially like when every time you want to jump in, you want to defend Giselle, but it does look like next week she's calling her out. By the way, I just have to say like, Karen Huger, when she was laying by the pool in her thigh high boots with like her thigh out, I was just like, that's a beautiful thigh. Like she looks so good. I feel like she's just... And it's supposed to be very difficult for Giselle to see all of this. Like, Karen is really living her best fucking life. Like, her things with her and Ray are so good. She's back on her feet financially. And she was open about that whole thing. Her kids are, like, you know, flourishing out in the world. She looks her best. She's got La Dame, the wigs. Like, I just feel like she is, like, such a boss. And Giselle is just, like, kicking herself. Like, it must kill her to see. Giselle's walking around in her fake Chanel cardigan that I saw on Instagram, certified fake Chanel cardigan, and just, like, living this fake life, like, pretending, living in all these lies. And Karen's just out here living her truth. She shared when she was going through a hard time with Ray. She shared their financial troubles. And now she's just living in her truth. And Giselle's still caught up in these lies. I know. And, I mean, we that's how we see it. But I do think that for the person who's, like, the Giselle in this situation like that's not how she sees it she literally she thinks that she's everything of the sort and that she can't roll up Karen to the west can't... wing and think she's living her best life no she she does though and like that's what she believes I I, think, I refuse to believe it I think I don't think she looks at Karen and is like this person has everything I want well I'm just saying from my perspective that's what it looks like on uh, for mine as well and Karen Huger responded to my story last night I totally forgot to tell you I was say? like so geeking out she said thank you so much because I just posted a picture like reminding everyone Karen's a queen right don't forget because it, it's hard it's easy to forget yeah so then she was like thank you so much and I was like oh my I'm obsessed with you and then she never answered oh <laughs> I like blew my load like way too early oh God. whatever I don't care I'm just so and she should know now our DMs are open and I feel like I tag her and stuff all the time like when I go to Brian's and I spray myself with La Dame fragrance yeah now she'll be able to see the content right okay cool get her on the toast literally like that would be I think that's actually up there whenever we say like Kelly Clarkson like Karen Huger on the show is a part of that especially for like dream housewives guests also Karen was on Bravo chat room with Giselle and kind of Portia was mediating this conversation between them. Karen posted the clip on her Instagram. They didn't really get anywhere. Karen was just being funny. Like I thought the show was like canceled. I thought it was too. Honestly, like the idea that there's an after show, like for the talent to talk is like not a bad idea. But first of all, the name is so bad. 
and I just feel like they were like weird. Like nobody wants to hear from Giselle, and like nobody wants like your Zoom content anymore. They gotta get in the studio, but then it's like they don't the, live together, right? The Bravo shows are, all, but they need. Portia was a perfect casting. I don't think Giselle was a good choice. No, I think it, it needs to be like someone young and like nosy, like. I don't know, like someone from Southern Charm. Like, you know what I mean? I just feel like it wasn't the right well, cast. Like, that's like what Hannah Burner was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. But she. And then what happened to Kate? <clears throat> I don't know. I, it's just, I thought we were, I thought that was behind us. I, I thought, thought it was, was like too. a quarantine thing. It should have stayed in quarantine. Yeah. That and like my knitting and the tie dyeing. Yeah. That was, yeah. Um, so that was a TV recap, and I do believe that is all she wrote. That is all that she wrote for today, but we'll be back tomorrow. We have Bachelor in Paradise on tonight. I will, I'll be watching until I can't watch no mo. Okay. You know? Thank you guys so much for listening to the Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us, Morning Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. If you're still listening to this, welcome to the society. Uh, if you're still listening, I can't think of an emoji, so just, just put leave a, a B for brew. A B, like the letter B or the animal B? Oh, the letter B. Okay, the letter B. Thank you so much for the clarification. Post that on our Instagram. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.